Hey everybody, before we get started, just remind you this episode brought to you by our patrons like Adam DeHarp, Architect 10, Bikes to G, Carlos, Dragon, Ferris, Jeremy Vasquez, Just of the Fake, John Sandoval, Legendary Boss Hunter, Regent Raptor, Rise of Kenji, Rogue Robin, Sharvor, Sean Pryor, Some Guy Named Bob, Seven Twenty Three, and Varian the Crow, and viewers like you. If you like what we do want to see us do more, consider supporting us on Patreon and get access to episodes early and lots of other goodies and really helps us out. Thank you for your support, everybody. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Let's Take FGO Wanted, the show where we let you know if you want to roll that five star. It is time once again to talk about the sexy slither of a lady snake. It's Ridra Baby. Coming to us in the form of a permanent SSR Lancer, we will do our usual breakdown for a Wanted if this is your first time. We're going to start by talking about a character's real life history and folklore, talk about any particular fate lore they may have, any other stuff they showed up in. Though, obviously, I realize now as I get further and further on in the years of this show, it's Less and less likely characters are from other fate things, and more and more likely they are just from FGO. Funny how that works. We will also talk about their mechanics. Some people are very interested in that and how it fits into their teams and stuff. And how frequently they have raid-ups and some other things that we've accrued over the years of doing this. Obviously, the raid-ups are not as important with a permanent unit, but still good to know if you want to focus on getting Vritra. So, Vritra is a notable figure in Hindu religious and mythological texts, a powerful asura, which is evil or antagonistic deities, sometimes called demigods or anti-gods, I've seen in some translations or scholarly discussions, sometimes also syncreticized as demons, and an enemy of Indra, king of the devas, and god of storms, king of heaven, major figure in the Hindu oeuvre. Richard's name can be literally translated as something like cover, obstacle, obstruction, and he is considered a personification of droughts, lack of water. Vritra is sometimes described as a human-like serpent, or in some translations, a dragon. And in the Vedas, Vritra is also referred to by the name Ahi, which means snake or serpent much more literally. So, various names, various appellations. Depending on the sources, there's quite a few retellings of a lot of these myths in different uh, Vedas and other poetic works, epics. So, we'll be going through a few forms here. Vritra is usually described as either the child of Tvashtar, a god of art and craftsmanship, who makes the Asura to get revenge on Indra. Though, in other Vedas, uh, especially the main ones that we get this legend from, Tvashtar makes Indra's Vajra, so that's a little weird. Or, Vritra is descended from Danu, a primordial god associated with waters and the mothers of the Danavas, which is a clan of Asura, so lots of different, you know, competing factions, different divine groupings, and so on and so forth. So there's a couple of different versions of Vritra's actual legend, but in a lot of the common elements, Vritra takes control, binds up, blocks all the waters in India, blocks the major rivers, etc., possibly by constructing 99 fortresses, or by coiling his body around a mountain. Since this impedes the happiness of mankind, because we don't got any water, it also puts fear into the gods, because Vitra's big enough to block up all the water. Indra, king of heaven, ends up slaying Vitra, restores the natural flow of water, brings sunshine and happiness, etc., and earns the epithet Vitra Han, slayer of Vitra. So it's one of Indra's many names. Indra also almost always accomplishes this with his Vajra, sometimes called the Thunderbolt, which is used to smash the obstacles and kill Vitra. It's a recurring element that comes up. This obviously has a lot of similarities to other famous myths and legends of storm gods defeating serpents who represent chaos or disaster. You know me, I make all kinds of syncreticism notes, which Nasu and the FGO team also do, so you might be able to draw connections to beings such as Jormungandr, Typhon, and Orochi. I'm sure that the Orochi connection is also not subtle considering the placement of this upcoming event. Anyway, there's also a lot of interpretations of seasonal work here. Indra's the god of storms and defeats Vritra, bringing seasonal rains and surging rivers, pretty important to agriculture, could be associated with monsoon season, stuff like that. And then there are other elements which come up depending on the version of the text. Vitra is usually referred to as a powerful Asura, sometimes as king of all the Asuras, and may have several other powerful gods in his service until they are convinced to switch sides by Indra. The primary Vedas sources say that he had Varuna, Agni, and Soma on his side originally, deities associated with water, fire, and night, respectively. And in some tellings, Vitra is large enough to actually swallow Indra whole, and either the other deities have to force Vitra to spin him back out, or... Indra actually kills Richard when cutting his way out from the inside, so, again, big snick. The version in the Mahabharata involves some very classic prophecy work as well, you know, setting yourself up for failure, 
In that case, Vritra is so strong that it forces Indra into a truce and makes Indra swear not to attack Vritra. I miswrote that in my notes, but I caught myself. With a weapon that is made of wood, metal, or stone that is neither dry nor wet and cannot be attacked during day or night. So Indra kills Vritra with sea foam empowered by Vishnu at twilight. Classic stuff. Additionally, in some versions and in some uh, religious or philosophical sects, Vritra is a follower devotee of Vishnu, the supreme being, the preserver, another major figure in Hindu belief. Vritra's undoing is basically caused by him turning away from his duty to Vishnu and embracing violence by leading the Asadas against the Devas, which means that Indra ends up guided and protected by Vishnu in their battle. Though these versions do usually say that Vritra ascends to Vishnu's realm after death. We may also get some of our, you know, recurring, ascending, summoning in the Bhagavata, gives a different physical description for Vritra, which is much more uh, eldritch and spooky, being a being which grows in every direction, like the points of a compass has a mouth big enough to swallow stars, and eventually his body becomes big enough to touch all corners of the heavens. I've seen some translations use the idea of solar system here, but I believe the original writers would not have had the actual sense of scale for that, but still, big. Additionally, in some of the Vedas, Vritra has a brother, named Vala, which means enclosure. It's a very similar root to Vritra, and Vala is also described as, you know, another basically monstrous being. A great cave, which is also defeated by Indra to reclaim some cattle, which are stolen from another deity. And I'm going to apologize if some of these facts or uh, versions are a lot of general, kind of overly, you know, in some tellings this and some tellings that. The primary source for a lot of Hindu material, and I always tell you to go to primary sources if you can, uh, this is going to be hard, because a lot of those are epic poems, which are staggeringly long and it is often hard to parse out and skim stuff to put in compact video form i only have so much to go here and summarizing even individual parts of you know the mahabharata the vedas other stuff like that is already like really expansive we are uh, uh trying to grossly oversimplify here and i want to acknowledge that but also we got to oversimplify <laughs> otherwise there's way too much material to go through so moving on to more fate-specific lore and commentary, as usual, we will ask the question immediately, why for is Vritra a lady? The translation of her profile that I've got outright claims it to be a mystery. Just a big shrug. While firmly giving female as the gender in the profile stats, it claims that Vritra itself is a concept beyond gender, so their nature doesn't really change if they're male or female. One theory is that this is a way to oppose Indra and avoid his tricks, which are for kids. Another connection is drawn to the Apsaras Rampa through some anecdote that I can't really track down. I don't see any easily accessible connection between Vritra and Rampa. So this could be some weird esoteric fact run down by the research team or just something we said to justify doing a thing. Rampa is related to Ravana, which seems to come up in Vritra's interlude, so maybe this will get clarified later. Put a pin in that one. But otherwise, on character design notes... It's pretty on the money here. Obviously, while called Snake, Vritra is often depicted as humanoid. You can see that in the bed image I've got now. But the Bhagavata version I mentioned earlier describes Vritra as having almost black skin, but with a lustrous tint like clouds, hair the color of melted copper. So tanned blonde with purplish black scales seems about right. Good on your art team. Also, while the trident Vritra is wielding is said to be Indra's Vajra, similar to Summer Raiko's weapon, while that is usually described as a mace, the version where this description I'm talking about comes from does mention that Vritra is supposed to be wielding a trident. So, you know, Lancer works out. FGO also seems to be taking cues from some alternate interpretations by scholars, where the scholarly interpretations have it that Vritra is not really a dragon of drought, but more of a winter giant sort of archetype. FGO explicitly seems to blend the two. The idea being that the waters are bound in ice during winters uh, around mountaintops and stuff. You know, streams often come from mountain sources, snow melt and stuff like that. And then are released in spring as part of the natural progression of seasons. Also, while I didn't find any overt suggestions in all the summaries I could find of this stuff online, that this specific myth of Ritra and Indra is actually cyclical, cycles are a recurring aspect of Hindu philosophy, beliefs, legends. We see this in Lost Belt 4 even. So Fate's interpretation that Ritra is sort of a recurring cyclical antagonist who keeps coming back as part of the seasonal cycle also flows into this interpretation. So it works, even if it does seem to be a little bit of the fate edge casing. So obviously, four-story content, Vritra will be a major character in the upcoming Christmas 2022 event. And I mentioned earlier, they will have a Syncourt's interlude, which will hopefully shed some more story stuff. That's part of interlude campaign 17, which will be next year. 
but as far as I can tell, haven't cropped up in any other story events so far. So we'll have to hope for maybe some clarification on some of these question mark points during the Christmas event. So then, let us move on to the mechanical portion. Now, Ritra is a permanent Lancer, but don't think that makes her worst off. She is currently the highest attack of any Lancer in the game, and is technically tied for the lowest HP with both Karna and Reminus Queerness. So, big attack, low HP, but tied at the same overall stats with some people. She has a quick, quick, arts, arts, buster deck. Somewhat uncommon for Lancers. I think it's like their number two most common one, but still heavily outweighed by the double quick, double buster setup. Average hit counts. Pretty normal NP gain. Not that that matters for an arts unit in 2022, but, you know, it's there. So her NP is a pretty simple AoE arts. It hits all enemies with skill seal for one turn. It hits them with 20% crit down for three turns and has an arts res down for three turns based on overcharge. Starts at 10%. Pretty straightforward stuff. Debilitates enemies, sets up for follow-up turns. First skill is also very simple. Three turns of 20 to 30% arts up and a one turn star absorb. Turn them into crits, get big arts. Second skill, very interesting, gives a team-wide 20 to 30% damage on divine. So bonus damage. And also gives herself 20 to 30% battery. Final skill is a bit of a doozy. It's got a lot of stuff in there, but a long cooldown to make up for it. This one is a one-time five turns guts for 1k to 3k HP. Very typical. 5 to 10% NP per turn for five turns. Very solid. And also gives all allies, including herself, obviously, a one-time five turns 10 to 20% NP damage up. Uh, a lot of the improvement we've made to tactics-type skills, for instance. So, pretty solid around there. Passives are just magic resistance A to give you a lot of debuff resistance, and the new Dragonkin A for damage cut and a buster up. So her one buster card will slap pretty good. Overall, build-wise, strat-wise, you should see Vritra as pretty simple, but a fairly effective Arts Lancer. That Arts res down and impressive NP per turn abilities, combines well with a small handful of damage buffs, Divine being a very common trait, uh, even among archers, but also just in general. And a very high inherent attack to aim to loop enemies and clap them pretty good. There's some hints of some bones of the old art stall in suppressing enemy skills and crits, but she's not really that strong at that on her own. It's just something you might want to consider. In a party comp, Vritra is a flex slot. On the one hand, you can use her damage buffs or inherently high attack to just keep trying to spam her AoE NP over and over again on enemies for farming or just whittling bosses down, such as including using a crit turn. Or, since several of her buffs are team-wide, she can be used to kill adds and juice up your primary attacker, who will probably be some sort of single-target lancer, probably like Kagetora just for the arts chains, but technically none of her AoE buffs do much for arts other than her arts down on NP. So there's some different options you could take there. If you're trying to make the most of Richer on her own, then you probably want to involve the usual suspects. Castoria covereth a multitude of sins with hard defenses, batteries, and attack buffs galore. But also, don't sleep on a Tomo collab. That can help put you back in that stall mood and also help with Vitra's lower HP and speed of the cooldowns on her important skills. Still valid. And future art support Lady Avalon will also let Vitra capitalize on that star absorb with better crits, which is something she doesn't really do well on her own. CE-wise, there are a few routes here. With only 20 to 30 battery, this may mean that if you want to go immediately into your NP without supports, you might run to rely on a K-scope or imaginary element. But if you use her app end skills, that's basically a 50% starter that opens up classics, Dive to Blue, New Beginnings, Painting Summer, all of these arts 50% CEs that you can work with. Hell, a future summer CE has Vritra on it. It's called Ocean Flyer. It gives you a 50% charge and a couple of arts-related buffs. I think it's NP damage and arts up. Anyway, it's solid. If you're just going to use supports to make it 100%, you can also consider other options. I would aim for arts and NP damage first of all, though some crit might be good. There's also a few arts-focused CEs which can give you piercing. That might come in handy. Archers do tend to be kind of squirrely. But of course, you can just, you know, go shit. Prisma Cosmos for more NP per turn, just to keep that looping going. Black Grail, probably slap pretty hard with the Black Grail, just saying. So, thankfully, Vritra doesn't really use any brand new mats, befitting a permanent unit added on an event that only requires Fujiki Clear to engage. But she does chew up a lot of bronze mats, particularly in the form of stakes for Ascension. Her skills also require a number of permafrost and giant rings. Presumably, somebody on the dev team remember that winter giant fact that got programmed into her profile. Hmm. So, keep that in mind. Vritra's primary banner is going to be the upcoming Path to Santa Claus event, happening very soon, as of the time I'm recording this, which just got a rerun in JP after an extra year, so that banner will be coming back as well. Additionally, as a lady servant, she will have write-ups on Valentine's banners in the future, being permanent. And, of course, as I just said, she is permanent, so anytime after her initial banner ends, she can hypothetically spook you in a role. Just, you know, 
then you're gambling a lot. Big gamba. Now, as I've noted, for you know future mechanical bonuses and stuff, Richard's going to have an interlude. That's a St. Quartz interlude. Don't need to worry about buffs there. She is obviously a big bonus servant in Path to Santa Claus in the rerun. And also, because she has you know the animal trait trait and is non-hominid, she is a bonus servant in Tunguska. So there's definitely some future use here, but not as much of a big feature as we'd like. Maybe we'll see her more in things and stuff and places. Seems like an interesting character. But there we go. Mary Lotto, everybody. That's the wanted. Obviously, feel free to uh, do the usual stuff. You know, drop us a like, subscribe for more wanted, ring the bell for notifications. You always know when Omega posts is at midnight. But also, you know, consider leaving your comments. Love to hear if that catalyst power works. If you are rolling, as usual, I will ask you, guys, you don't need to leave a comment if you're skipping her banner to save for Muramasa. I am also doing that. We know. It's okay. I like the engagement, but come up with something a little more interesting than that in a comment, at least, please. We all know. We all know. We have clairvoyance. We know. But if you are rolling for Vritra, or if you just get her on a lucky ticket or something, consider joining our Discord link in the video description on our channel page. We've got a rolling thread where people post all their rolls all the time. Have fun out there. I know some people are going ham. They're after the snake lady. You can also consider supporting us on Patreon, like I said at the front of the show. Could have gotten this video early. Also consider joining our channel memberships for membership badges and emotes you can use in those sweet, sweet comments. And on all, so it's a good time. All right. That one was a little more compact than I thought it would be writing this script, but I guess it flowed pretty well. So here we are. Get it? Flowed? Wait. Maybe it should be not flow. I love the sexy slither of a lady snake. Oh, baby.